live from the mist and shrouded mountaintop fortress that is X and Y Communications Headquarters. You're listening to the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. And now, here's your host, Scott McKay. All right, gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. Ah, uh, yeah, as always, I am your host, Scott McKay, at Scott McKay on most major social media platforms with the exception of Instagram where I'm at real Scott McKay. The Facebook group, of course, is the Mountaintop Summit. You guys should join us. Hey, there are a lot of really super interesting threads heating up there and it's all because of you guys and your participation. Come join a group of like-minded men at the Mountaintop Summit. The Website, as always, is mountaintoppodcast.com. Hey, this is going to be a fun show. Every once in a while, a guest comes on and introduces me to another potential guest, and I'm ever so grateful that they do that. Today is one of those happy occasions. You may remember a few weeks ago, we had Adam Gamble on uh, talking about how every guy needs a wingman, and he was talking about his best friend and how they helped each other get better with women. And in the midst of that show, if you listen to it, you heard Adam speak very highly of his own dating coach uh, when he was trying to get better with women, whose name was Thomas Edwards. Well, I was so impressed with what Adam had to say about Thomas that I had him arrange that introduction. So guess what? Today's guest is none other than Thomas Edwards, the professional wingman. Welcome, Thomas. It's a pleasure to meet you, man. Scott, thanks for having me, man. It's so cool. Yeah, I say it's a pleasure to meet you. We've been talking for like a half an hour before we got started. <laughs> and we're like brothers from another mother, dude. You like you, Totally. Yeah, yeah. You got a beautiful wife and you're still teaching guys how to get better with women. And we were kind of laughing out loud in a fun way, of course, about how a lot of guys really are marketing geniuses and they know how to get clicks with, hey, here's three simple things you say to a woman to make her spread her legs, et cetera. And yet you and I and guys like us, you know, we can tell when the other person knows what they're doing. You know, game recognizes game, you know, like they say in the NBA. Yeah. Mm hmm. And it's all because we talk about truth. We talk about what really works with women as opposed to a bunch of tricks and a bunch of games. And you call yourself the professional wingman, and that's who you were for Adam. And uh, you started off in Boston, but now you've kind of found your way to Asheville, North Carolina, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long journey. I mean, I started the professional wingman. I started coaching, actually, late in 2008. And then I started the professional wingman in March of 2009. So it's been about 15 years of uh, you know working with men around the country and, and parts of the world. And uh, yeah, you know, being married and still being a wingman, I feel like that's like the, the highest of regard <laughs> in the dating industry, where our wives can give us our blessings to go out and and change men's lives. I think it's pretty awesome. Well, you know, I get a lot of guys who wonder about that, even guys who come here. And do the 10 plus live with me, which is what I call my, you know, four day outing with guys. They're kind of circumspect at that first dinner when, you know, Emily joins us to even talk about what happened that day because they just can't wrap their heads around the fact she's okay with it. And so I'll start talking about, yeah, we had this really good interaction with, you know, this girl and her name was this and here's what she said and here's what she did. And Emily kind of does improv with me, like, yes, and it probably went like this and that and blah, blah, blah. And these guys are just flabbergasted. <laughs> but the thing is, this is actually to be expected when you're going out in field and doing the right things to make women interested in you, because we're not hitting on women. We're not leading with sexual interest. We're simply no. leading with being charming and having women really enjoy our company and want more of us. And I don't know about you, but I do this on the daily. I mean, it's a habit in my life, even when my wife's standing right next to me. And you know what, Thomas? My wife's the same way. She can charm the heck out of yeah. guys while I'm standing there. And it's just because it's who we are. It's about authentic attractiveness, right? It's so important. Absolutely important. I mean, if, if not for me being who I am and what I do, I would not have met my wife. And she'll even tell you, she's been on the record multiple times saying it's about my lifestyle and how I showed up that attracted her. And then when she got to know me, the, the person, the character, that's when she fell, she fell in love. And so for me to shelf that or put that away would actually be ruining the attraction that exists between us. So I still do a lot of the things, you know, we've been married, we'll be 10 years uh, later on this year that we'll be married. We've been together for 14 years. 
I mean, I'd still do some of the same stuff <laughs> now that I did back then, and it still works, you know? So I think for guys like you and I, you know, having proof of longevity and success, I think is like, once again, the highest acclaim because we practice what we preach on a day by day basis. And it doesn't matter if it's just our wives, we can go and we can walk down the street and we can create that connection. We can create that experience because it's who we are. These, these guys are the coaches that you want to be looking for. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. You know, it's all about track record and you think that would matter. Like, okay, this guy is going to be my coach. What is his success rate? And I hear guys say that they've been consuming content from someone else. And I go look this person up and there is absolutely no mention of any one female in this person's life. There are no pictures mm -hmm. of them with a female. It's just them in their mug, you know, in front of the camera. And, you know, they call themselves insert name here, coaching incorporated. And then they never talk about anything personal. It's just them barking out a bunch of orders to guys with no, no way to vouch for whether it worked in their own life or not. And, Yet these guys, yeah. I guess they're fast talkers or whatever they are, but they get a huge audience and especially the guys who are Thomas, the ones who go, Hey, you know what? Just stay, stay away from all women. They're all horrible. Go your own way. All these red pill guys. <laughs> I can't believe yeah. how huge the market is in the dating coach world for telling guys just to avoid women and stay away from them to begin with. You know what I mean? Well, here's. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, Scott. Like, if, if you look back to, I want to say, 2006, 2007, this was kind of the rise of the pickup artist community, right? Because sure. the PH1, I was the there. pickup artist, oh, yeah. the game, right? Yeah, right. So I didn't come from that, but I was, I was very enamored with how the rise happened so quickly. And I realized that part of it was because over the history of time, men have struggled with creating connection with the opposite sex. It's, it, I mean, it has been a problem since the beginning of time. And at certain levels, there's a natural, a visceral reaction of trying to solve that problem. And it has to come from either a positive, hopeful, constructive place, or it comes from a frustrated, resentful, angry place, right? And so when these solutions come up that you know, I think they have good intentions, such as the pickup artist community, because it talked about the psychology and the science of seduction and attraction. But the people who are using that information were coming from a place where they were feeling resentful, frustrated. They had their own trauma and wounding that happened in their pursuit of becoming better. It is the same exact thing that's happening today. We've reached a level where there's a lot of women who you know, they have more choice than they ever had before, thanks to social media and the internet. And it's causing guys who don't have as much value to bring to the world struggle more than they ever have. And it's caused a lot of frustration, a lot of anger. And in pursuit of this, the ultimate solution, here comes what's known as the red pill space or the manosphere space, telling them, well, screw women, don't worry about them, you focus on your own thing. And meanwhile, it doesn't solve the problem that they went in there with which is I want to be in a relationship. I want connection. So yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, it creates this vortex of doom when those guys all get together in their anger and bitterness and kind of find their little echo chamber. And the yep. trick we play on ourselves psychologically, Thomas, is we find those guys and there are enough of them to fool us into believing, Hey, we must all be correct. I mean, how can 150 yeah. of us be wrong? Right. And then, like I said, it becomes just a negative thing. And it doesn't lead to happiness or fulfillment because men are designed to be in partnership with women. I mean, even physically, mm -hmm. you know, we kind of yeah. fit together. So that brings me to a question I really want to ask you. You talked about your wife and how she kind of issues a blessing for you to go out and teach guys in field and you're still doing everything. You said a lot of things, but I have a feeling you're doing most everything that worked when you met her to attract her still today. And that, of course, is key. Yeah. What would her side of the story be? What would your wife say is so unbelievably attractive in a lasting way about you. Go ahead and brag on yourself a little bit, because I think, first of all, I want to compare notes with you. I want to see what your wife yeah. says compared to mine and see if there's any commonality there, if there's a thread. Also, I think it's really worthwhile for guys to hear this. So don't be shy about it. Yeah. Tell, tell us what she says. Well, you know, we, we had a conversation towards the end of, of the calendar year and she gushed over, over me about how proud she is of the man that I've become today. Cause you know, we've all, I've, I've gone through a lot of adversity in my, in my life and to she's witnessed 
my resilience and my comeback every single time being stronger than ever. And what she has always said about me is three things. One, I'm charismatic and I'm fun. You know, she wow. just loves how confident I am about myself, about how I carry myself. There you go. She loves my stability. When she's an emotional hot mess, she can be that way knowing that I'm not going to join her in that space, <laughs> that I'm the place of stability. I'm the place of consistency that can allow her to be in that space and be held. So she just knows that I'm reliable in that way, right? I'm consistent, stable. And then the third thing is I work on myself. Well, that was three already. <laughs> this is right? the fourth like, one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess the you fourth have charming, one here, right? you have confidence, and then you have being that rock of stability, right? Yeah. And so I the guess fourth the fourth one. thing that would be a bonus, right, is that I constantly am working on myself. I'm constantly looking to improve myself at a, a, just a consistent level to the point where, you know, one could argue that I am unrecognizable today than I was even a year ago. And the things I'm able to do in a year would take people two, three, four, maybe five years to accomplish because I'm so committed to just being better, even if it's just by 1%. And she knows that and she sees that and she appreciates that because she knows it's not just for me and my own personal fulfillment, which is important, but it also betters her and it also betters our family. Well, you know, that last part is important though. If you're doing it for you, not for her, then that's what takes the word simp out of the equation. If you're just trying to please a bunch of women (laughs) and kowtow to them and trying to figure out what they want so you can give them more of it in a way that diminishes yourself, that's when you're going to get in trouble and you're going to go, well, I did everything these women said they wanted and it still didn't work. But you, on the other hand, man, you're speaking my language and I knew you would. Man, your wife (laughs) must just be the happiest, most satisfied woman. She must just brag about you to all her friends and they roll her eyes and go, yeah, well, when I can find a man like that. Maybe we can have this conversation because their guys are all either, well, they're jerks or they're simps, right? Well, yeah. And it takes a, it takes a lot of effort, man. Like here's the thing. Of course right? it like, does. It's, it of takes so it much effort to be present as a businessman, be present as a father, be present as a husband. The two need to exist, right? And I see when I work with a lot of guys, especially dads, right? The one thing that they will tell me all the time is, man, you know, I'm a great dad. My kids love me but my, I don't have a marriage. I don't have yep. any type of life. And it's like, well, what's the first thing that goes away when you have a kid? Typically it's the marriage because all of a sudden you take off the, on the, on the husband hat and you put on, I'm a dad hat. And you forget that that's still a hat you need to wear from time to time. So, <laughs> so yeah, right, for being sure. able to, right. Having the capacity to be able to be present in those roles that you play without giving up the previous one. Right. It, it does take effort. And that's why a lot of guys sometimes have trouble or they falter, they feel challenged by it. Well, it takes intent. You've got to say, this woman in my life, this is my queen. You know, I had a guest on this show who said, you know, if your wife's your queen, what does that make you? And I'm like, you're darn skippy. Makes you the king, (laughs) right? Undeniable. Yeah, man. I love it. I love that analogy. Now, let's dissect what you said a little bit, because I think this is incredibly important, not only for these guys to hear in its raw form, but it leads really nicely as a segue into our topic du jour. First of all, you're charismatic and you're fun, okay? So you're coaxing out of the woman in your life and presumably the women you met before her, right? This femininity, this feminine nature, she she finds you irresistible. She's charismatically drawn to you. She says she finds you charismatic, which means not only that she wants more of you because you're charming, but that she's willing to follow your leadership because she trusts you. That's charisma, right? Yes. So then you're confident. So you believe a woman like her should be attracted to you, and she follows that lead. Third, you're providing this safe nest for her to play around in as a feminine human being, and then what does she do? She enriches your life with that femininity. Again, she's following your lead. You gave, you were generous, you were optimistic, right, and fun, and she follows suit. And this is so difficult for very selfish, very bitter guys to wrap their heads around because they're so busy yeah. trying to find a way to trick women into bed that they forget she's human. And not only is she human, but her feminine nature responds to masculine leadership. Then absolutely, to culminate the whole thing, you wrap all this up with the character of a man who is becoming a better man. He didn't say, oh, you know what? Uh, 
I got this woman in my life. I'm going to let everything slip. I got her locked down. You know, I'm just going to relax, get a little lazier, get a little fatter around the midsection and, you know, maybe not put as much effort in. No, because you are you and your character won't let you slip. Therefore, you have, again, led her to become a better woman every day. And the next thing you know, you're together for, you know, 10 years in your case, 18 in the case of Emily and I. And we're better people for it and we're hotter for each other than ever. This seems like a simple equation to you and I, Thomas, but a lot of guys, you know, it's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together, which brings (laughs) me to what you brought up today as the topic you wanted to cover, which is gamifying your masculinity, which, of course, sounds a little fraught to guys who come from the pickup artist community and been around a while and been around the block. Uh, because, you know, anytime you game something, you're kind of trying to beat the system a little bit and find a cheat code. And that can feel a little underhanded and dishonest. But I know that's not where you're coming from because no. you talk about creating authentic polarity with women through this concept of gaming your masculinity. So I think it sounds like an incredible, certainly a clickbaity topic. And I want you to unpack it for us. Tell us what you're talking about there, man. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I've spent a lot of time, several years studying gamification, game design. I mean, I went to school for for games originally, college. I wanted to be a producer. Uh, like you mean for video literally? Games. And so video games. Literally. What's, yeah, okay, gotcha. yeah, literally right. video games. Like I like my, where this is going. Yeah, my yeah. dream – my dream was to be a producer for Sony Entertainment to go out and live out in Tokyo, Japan, and just like live the life, right? And, and it mm-hmm. obviously didn't turn out that way, but I still had this passion for video games and the industry and, and the the psychology of how games work. And so I decided to just go all in on what does that look like? You know, I I spent time actually, you know, semi professional becoming a gamer and competing in tournaments, both online and in person, studying the craft, really immersing myself, and I realized, you know. When you can take a gamified approach to life, your performance dramatically increases. And then I went into the science of it, and I realized that playfulness is actually what I consider an elite form of mindfulness and and personal development. Because think about it as kids, as we grew up, right? The way that we learned the most was through play, playing with our kids, playing counting games, color games we just learned and we think about dolphins they're the most social animals we've seen they learn through play and 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 social dynamics well, and hold so, on i've heard that's a mammalian yeah. trait in general yeah across yeah. the board yeah right and so at some point in my personal experience i thought i was done playing i was done learning right and it really stunted my personal growth and it showed across the board in my life you know i didn't have a great relationship with my wife for a certain period of time i didn't feel healthy in my body i didn't feel connected to my higher power who i call god i didn't feel like my business was thriving there were certain areas of my life where i just didn't feel fulfilled because i wasn't having fun and not the kind of fun that like is throwaway fun but the the joy of experiencing personal fulfillment the joy that comes from being better than you were the day before. And, and that's where video games came into play, right? Like think about Super Mario Brothers, like the original OG of gaming, right? You'd play the game and let's say you're on your last life, right? And you're in, in that in that game, in that instance, you're playing for literally for survival. Like you don't want to die. And so you're doing everything you possibly can to not die. Right. And it's like, it's so labor intensive. It's emotionally exhausting. And then when you get through the level, you're like, it's like relief. Right. But then you're, you got the next level and then it just repeats itself over and over again. But something magical happens when you get that first green mushroom, right? The extra life. All of a sudden, you're like, oh man, I, I could take some risks. I can take my time. I can explore. I can face that Goomba or fall in that pit. Cause if you do, you have this extra life plus feedback. And naturally, with feedback, you're going to get better because it's a game. You're going to play again. So I went all in on this idea that if you gamified anything in your life, you will naturally be be better because you're going to enjoy the process of becoming better. Now, of course, you need structures. And you know, I, I was able to create a whole structure around how you can do that in different areas of your life. But going now into the idea of authentic polarity and where this comes from is – the concept of authentic polarity was something I was considering a long time ago. And it's basically the idea where in today's world where it's about the attention economy, right? Everyone's struggling to get everyone anyone's attention. And it's the thing that, like, like you said, clickbaity, 
right? The things that grab attention are the things that win. Well, your authenticity can be that same thing, being polarizing. And what that means is you're so true to who you are, your, your core beliefs, your values, how you show up, your character, that naturally it's going to cause a polarizing response where there's going to be people who are just not going to be about you. They might even hate you, right? But there's going to be people who absolutely are obsessed with you. They love you. And you want those people in the world of dating. <laughs> you want those women in the world of dating who are just obsessed with how authentic and how polarizing you are. And if you could do that, man, what a life you can live. Well, yes. And not only do you create uh, this attraction, you're attracting women who, wait for it, you're actually going to like. They agree with you. Yes. They're they're your people. They're one of yes. you. So yes. enough. So enough of this woman who's got really nice boobies, but you know she votes completely differently than you, prays completely differently than you, and won't even eat a steak dinner with you. I mean, what are you doing, man? You know what I mean? When you yeah. are authentically who you are, instead of trying to well game women, right? Which is mm -hmm. the other version of gaming something, right? Then the next thing you know, you just start enjoying the women you attract because you're being yeah. authentic and they're female. So they love the masculinity in you. And you're thinking, man, the more I talk to this woman, the sexier she gets. She looks great on the surface. And because I'm authentic and true to myself, right, I become more confident in my ability to attract other people. Because another thing that's happening when you're this authentic is even the people who don't like you. If they have a good head on their shoulders and aren't just, you know, morons, they at least respect you. Exactly. Because they know you're standing for something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people who disagree with me, I can respect them, even though I don't agree with them. Now, if they start calling me names and go all ad hominem on me, well, then you know what? They can take a hike and, you know, they've forfeited the right to be part of the adult conversation, as I like to say. But there really is something to this, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. And you hit the nail right on the head, right? The key of not just attraction, but retention, <laughs> right? Is well, sure. shared values, shared yes, values, character right? Too. Exactly. So you exude the person that you want to attract. I mean, this is so simple, right? But you're doing it in such a powerful way. And what does authentic polarization really even exude? Well, it exudes masculine strengths such as integrity. It exudes courage. It exudes character. It exudes strength. It exudes self-respect. It exudes Having things excellence. Handled. Uh, yes, assertiveness. It exudes a, a level of uh, humility to know that I'm not for everyone, but I could be for anyone if they give me a chance. Like that, those things that get subcommunicated by being authentically polarizing is what women sense without you having to say much. And I think that's what gets missed with a lot of guys who are trying to pursue or create attraction with women, they have to seek alignment within themselves in order for them to create alignment elsewhere. I love it. And you know what? As much as I am pleased that you aren't living that sexually isolated lifestyle as an otaku in the Akihabara district in Tokyo, <laughs> and that you're with us here in Asheville, North Carolina, I want you to bring this back around full circle and talk about how gamification applies to all these amazing masculine attractive principles we're so proud to talk about. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the things that we have to accept inside of masculinity is that life is hard for men. It's just hard. And when we can accept that, then the real work gets to begin. We know that we're we have to come from quote unquote a losing hand. And this is where a lot of the skill sets get to be developed within us as men and develop masculinity. So what I do when I work with my clients is I create a whole gamified structure. And what, and just to kind of give you an idea of a uh, definition. So there's clarity here. Gamification is basically a structure that leads to a reward. So think of like your credit card has a points program. That's a gamified program. Uh, any other rewards program that you have is a gamified program. But I, I actually focus more on game design where you literally design your actions to be associated with a point value that leads to you eventually, quote unquote, winning the game. And the reward itself is the experience. So it's not the actual win. The win is, is, a, is a byproduct of the whole thing. But the idea of game design 
within the concept of a game is that you, you enjoy the process of playing and getting better each time you do it. It's not so much that you win because the truth is you don't really want the game to end, especially if it's a good game. You want to be able to keep playing. And that's what good games are. So if you can create your own version of that for your life, then it works. So I'll give so a great example of this would be for some of my clients, I had one client, I'll use one example for one client. One client came to me, he recently actually just got engaged and he wanted to create more fun with his girlfriend at the time. And he didn't consider himself a fun guy, but I got to know him. I think he's pretty funny. So I told him, listen, why don't you have a game with yourself? See if you could come up with a silly joke. It could be a dad joke for, for all it matters. It doesn't matter. But send a joke to, to your, your girlfriend. And every time you do it, you give yourself a couple points, right? And over the course of a month, I want you to track how many points you got. And whatever percentage you got, you correlate the, that percentage to how much more fun you're having inside of your relationship due to you making this subtle shift in your life. And sure enough, when he was doing, delivering the jokes as corny as they were, not only was he enjoying the experience of making her laugh, she was enjoying the experience of laughing. And it brought them closer together than they than he ever expected. And so the undertone of gamifying this, this whole thing is just tracking your activity as it relates to who you're looking to become and what you're looking to accomplish. But just in a gamified way, because it's fun. Everyone loves games. Yeah. You know, several things come to mind as you're talking. First of all, fun is the root of funny. And mm -hmm. women really do just want to have fun. And women will laugh when they're having fun. Women will enjoy themselves when they're having fun. And women will anchor that feeling of safety, security, and general well-being they're feeling while they're relaxed and having fun to you and credit it to yeah. you. So, no, you don't have to be this – huge, you know, thug of a dude who can just bounce people and, you know, beat people up who threaten her. In this day and age, thankfully, most of us in our quest to make women feel safe and protected don't have to involve ourselves in being physically goons and beating the crap out of other guys and, you know, fighting off a warring village faction or something. So that's the first thing. Second of all, uh, and this is coming out of left field, I'm sure for a lot of these guys, I'm reminded of the Roberto Benigni film that actually won an Oscar mm. a couple decades ago now called Life is Beautiful. And one of the amazing things about that movie winning the best picture Oscar, which I'm pretty sure it did. I mean, somebody may fact check me on that. I'm talking from memory here. But the reason why that movie was so compelling was because the lead character, Benini's character, was sent to a Nazi concentration camp with his son. And he protected his son and empowered his son to survive that Nazi concentration camp until the day it was liberated by turning the whole thing into a game, you know, mm. kind of helping his son see it as a contest that he needs to win. And you get points for doing this and, you know, don't do that because you'll lose and you want to avoid this and do more of that. And, you know, I mean, this is a bit of a spoiler alert, but the child survives Nazi Germany that way. And it's a wonderful movie. And he gamified that experience that was very difficult and very demanding and cost most people their very lives in a horrific fashion and made it into a game and it empowered his boy. So yeah. even from a core human perspective, this idea of turning everything into a contest, especially for men, mind you, because we're kind of hardwired that way. I mean, somewhere there are women who are kind of flies on the wall listening to this, Thomas, and they have no idea what in hell we're talking about. They just know <laughs> if we make them feel the way we're saying we like to make women feel, they're nodding their head going, yeah, that's great. But we talk about this whole gamification of things, and they're scratching their heads, which I think is funny. So it's definitely masculine yeah. wiring, but it is our wiring to want to gamify things. So instead of giving up and thinking, you know, this freaking sucks and wallowing in this bitterness that we talked about, so many guys fall into this vortex, this trap of feeling that way, turn it all into a big game. Yeah. And the last thing that comes to mind, and I want you to comment on this, is, you know, this really is a journey to be enjoyed, not simply a destination. I mean, I think of chicks going, mm -hmm. I want to get off this freaking dating site and find my husband and start making babies and live happily ever after. I just want to find my, my guy and get married. And 
I think men are more likely, if we allow ourselves to, instead of getting tunnel vision, you know, we're more likely to really enjoy dating. Man, I'm dating two women at once. I'm dating three women at once. Now I've raised the bar where all three of the women I'm dating are hot. I'm feeling like the king of Siam about now. And then <laughs> once you meet the right woman for you, it becomes a lot more of a decision that you decide to, you know, kind of retire from the game and, well, do what we did, coach. <laughs> It's yeah, like, it's like yeah. it's like being a professional, you know, NFL or baseball or NBA player. You know, when we retire from the actual game, we teach other guys how to get better and become the coach. Yeah, but that's the difference between me and you, Scott, and so many other coaches who are out there, right? Like we've done it, right? We've done it. We've been able to find the, the woman of our dreams. We've been able to get and track her. We've been able to keep her, and we've been able to keep her for a long time. Now, I've been able to re repeat this process almost 400 times. I've worked with over a thousand clients, but almost 400 of my clients are married and zero of them are divorced. Now That's it doesn't amazing. mean that, <laughs> now I want to say a very important disclaimer. It doesn't mean that that won't happen. You know, divorces won't happen in the future, right? Like the odds are heavily against me considering the, the studies and the statistics that are out there. But for right now, I'm batting a thousand, which tells me that I'm doing something right. Right. And so the difference between guys like us is that we actually are speaking from experience and repetition and current practice, which is very, very, very important. And you hit a really good, important point around the idea of men and gamification and games and even women, right? Like we all love games. We all love games. The problem with games is when we size up ourselves against someone else. That's when things can go wrong. But for men, the game that they need to play is them against themselves. And if they do that and they just focus on 1% improvement incrementally every day, man, there's magic in compound effort. And you will be amazed what committing yourself to a year of playing this game against yourself will lead to you a year from now. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of guys are very used to comparing themselves against some stud who they think they can't compete with. And I don't think that's even gender specific. I think women constantly mm. compare themselves against a woman who they think is prettier or hotter. Absolutely. And it's really odious because first of all, <laughs> this is going to sound a little harsh, Thomas, but I bet you're going to agree with me. My opinion of how hot I am doesn't even matter. What matters is what her opinion of me is, what she yeah. thinks of me. And too many guys are pre-rejecting themselves vis-a-vis -vis giving mm -hmm. women a chance to decide how great a guy they are. So if you stop comparing yourself against other guys who you are sure in your own estimation would be the guy she'd choose over you, et cetera, et cetera, then you can play this game with yourself, like you said, uh, not to be confused with playing with yourself, right? Uh, that's a podcast <laughs> for a different nah. day. Oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, indeed – you start seeing results and you feel better about yourself. Your confidence improves. Your swagger improves. Next thing you know, it is a compounded result that makes you more attractive. And then when you finally get off top dead center and allow a woman to say yes to you, right? I mean, the whole concept of acceptance and rejection when you're asking a woman out, when you're talking to her is invented by us as men. Women don't see it yeah. that way. They're like, oh, a well, boy's nope. talking to me. How cute, you know? Yeah. And it's amazing how if you find a woman you like and she feels chosen by you, perhaps ironically enough, because you actually like her more than the other women, she's more likely to say yes to you because she's following your lead. Yeah. I have yeah. no idea. I have no idea what makes me a better man ultimately than some of these guys who are hitting on my wife. I mean, I do because it's everything we've been talking about this whole show. Yeah. But I stopped second guessing it a long time ago. It's just like, well, you yeah. know what? I appreciate and adore that woman more than any other guy could. She responded powerfully to that, and voila, she thinks I'm the greatest guy in the world. It's a design. It's a it's an intelligent design. It yeah, really is. Absolutely. It really is. And and here's what's interesting, right? You know, when we're in pursuit of anything that we desire in our lives that we believe is going to make us happier, on the journey towards that very thing, studies have shown that our happiness decreases on the journey towards getting there, 
right? So we're already unhappy that we don't have the thing, but now we're trying to pursue the thing. And then we're even unhappier along the way. This is why when we do eventually, when we actually acquire the thing, there's this huge spike of, of dopamine and excitement. And then the crash is inevitable because then you're right. think, your mind is immediately thinking, oh, well, what's next? Right. Getting and kills wanting, right? Exactly. Right. And then at least a whole nother thread because you haven't really thought about what's next, right? You thought about what was right in front of you, which is I need to get the girl. And now you're like, oh my gosh, I got the girl. This is awesome. And then when you come back from reality, you're like, oh crap, like how do I, how do I keep her? <laughs> well, it seems right? to me the solution for that is treating the woman you really wanted as a partner you found to align with for future conquests and future adventures, not the conquest in and of herself. That to me seems yeah. like the solution there, right? Totally. Think of yeah. it like a, you know, um, like a, like a stock or any type of secondary asset, right? You, you hear this very commonly, you make your money on the buy, not on the sell. And I think the same thing applies to your pursuit of a relationship. You make your relationship when you actually acquire the relationship that you want, not in the relationship itself. Because if you're hoping that the relationship when you're in it becomes this thing that you want or the woman becomes that this thing that you want, you've already lost the relationship. It's already on the decline. So that's why authentic polarity comes really handy because when you're really expressing yourself and you're taking total ownership of who you are, your values, what you stand for, and, and how you show up and you attract like-minded women, it's not the value that you're going to get from her, but it's the value of the experience you'll have with her that is going to make the relationship much more sustainable in the long run. Yeah, that never gets old. I love it. it I think that's a yeah. fantastic place to draw this particular conversation to a close. You know, Thomas, man, I think you and I could talk about women and getting better with them probably for a 24 hour endurance session here, you know, but since <laughs> this isn't, you know, Le Mans and it's only a podcast, I think we'll save it for another day and invite you back for sure. In the meantime, what I want to do is I want to send these guys to your website, uh, which is the professional wingman.com. And if you want to get there quickly and easily, guys, just go to mountaintoppodcast.com front slash wingman. All one word, W-I-N-G-M-A-N. -N. And when they go there, Thomas, what are they going to discover? So I have some really cool stuff. So I have a fun little quiz that asks you if you're quote unquote dateable. It's, it's a funny just way to kind of check in on your skill sets. I have amazing programs and offerings for you, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, inside of a group, in person, virtual. And I also have what's called Wingman AI which is my knowledge base put inside of uh, an AI algorithm that will allow you to ask questions right there on the site. And you can get some real feedback that is from me and my knowledge base. And um, I think it's really good to help guys who may maybe want to get a little bit more off their feet when it comes to dating, or if they want to learn more about relationships and how to make them more sustainable, or even if you just want to develop more masculine skill sets and values and how to improve them. That's the place to go. So you can go there and just have fun and, and hopefully I get to hear from you. All right, man. Sounds great. And guys, once again, to check all that out, go visit Thomas Edwards at mountaintoppodcast.com front slash wingman. Again, Thomas Edwards from Asheville, North Carolina, by way of Boston. Uh, what a wonderful show. And again, like I said, man, come on back. Let's talk more about this. Would love to, man. And thanks so much for having me, Scott. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. It's been a pleasure as I figured it would be. Guys, if you go over to mountaintoppodcast.com right now, you can get in on the master classes. At the end of every month, I do a deep dive with you guys live and in person into a specific area of getting better with women. I tell you what, the satisfaction level is about 100% from you guys when you get on board. A lot of you guys even out for the season ticket after giving in a test drive saying, man, I want more of this. I want more where this came from because guys get results for going to those master classes and it happens immediately. It's like actionable steps you can start using the very next day after that evening master class. Find out about all the master classes by going to mountaintoppodcast.com front slash master class. While you're at mountaintoppodcast.com, absolutely positively get on my calendar to talk to me free for 25 to 30 minutes. Some of you guys have not done that yet. Hey, 
If all this talk today and on recent shows has made you think I need to get the right woman in my life once and for all, let's don't delay this any longer, guys. Get on the phone, talk to me. You can sign up, get on my calendar at mountaintoppodcast.com. While you're there, please also give some love to our sponsors, Jocko Willink's company, Origin in Maine, the Hero Soap Company, and the Keyport, which is, of course, that everyday carry item for the 21st century that is not your grandfather's Swiss Army knife. When you partake of any of our sponsors' goods, please use the coupon code MOUNTAIN10 to get 10% off your order. And until I talk to you again real soon, this is Scott McKay from X and Y Communications in San Antonio, Texas. Be good out there. The Mountaintop Podcast is produced by X and Y Communications. All rights reserved worldwide. Be sure to visit www.mountaintoppodcast.com for show notes. And while you're there, sign up for the free X and Y Communications newsletter for men. This is Ed Roy Odom speaking for the Mountaintop Podcast.